And if you onboard, let's pick 20, 20 new customers tomorrow, then it will not produce any complexity for you, like literally zero. All right, so my topic today is productize, transform yourself, uh, your service business into a scalable system. And it's actually not about the software like at all. So if you run any kind of a service business, like you're a freelancer, do anything with an agency, like you're an accountant, a lawyer, whatever, then this masterclass will be helpful for you. Anyone in the crowd who does anything related to services, like people-to-people -people stuff? Okay, so almost everyone. Then, I mean, it's, it's going to be a great benefit. So a little bit my, about myself. So uh, right now I'm 29, heading over to my 30s, originally from Ukraine, now living in Barcelona. Uh, all in all, I have quite an extensive experience in uh, agency digital producing world. So by 12 years, um, made my way from like freelancing. It's not on the slides, but no one actually like brags about being a freelancer. Um, Made, made it to the owner of an agency and all the way to the C-level in a large international advertising holding. When I was taking care about the digital side of it, it's like Southern employees working with some of the big brands, like these ones. And finally, I ended up, uh, we together with my partner, Marcel Knopf, who is um, organizing all this. And I guess a little bit of applause to Marcel because he'll be watching it. Uh, we run one page, one page that's IO, which is a SaaS page building software, and and my clicker just went crazy. All right, it's not what I want to be. All right, so again, customers, and the reason I'm, for me being on this stage is actually the one page because we are kind of pretty deep into the market. So as an international, the only reason why I'm speaking to you right now is because. Since these five years, I've become kind of an expert in your market. We see everything that's going on. We have around 90,000 projects that are built, and where project equals domain, so it's quite a lot. And then half a million pages that are live right now. So all across different niches, and like starting from agencies, ending up with like construction companies, like literally everyone is using one page. So it's become quite popular. Uh, our ground base is still in Dach, so it's German-speaking market, it's our home base, and uh, we are like experiencing 10 to 15 percent month-to-month growth, which, considering the size of a business, is quite a good number. And so that means that we manage something, we reach the product market fit right now, and we are like expanding. By the way, any one-page customers in there, like, or any... I see. All right, so... Let's just skip it, and most importantly, people like it. So it was a tough journey. It took us many years to finally build something that people like. And right now, on this event, I mean, we receive a great feedback, so we barely received some bug reports or something, and that means that we do something right. So all, uh, to wrap it up, this is the reason of me speaking. This is my expertise. I know what I'm saying about, and I've seen a, a lot of examples, that, and this is the knowledge that I want to share with you. OK, so it's a decent result for a bootstrap software in the current economy, right? It's a little bit of bragging. OK, so today's presentation will be divided into three parts, where first is, what are the products actually? Again, it's not about the software. We'll talk about what products are in general, then why businesses, and I mean all the businesses, needs to start building products. Why does it trend? What is it? What is it? What is, um, why is it happening, kind of? So what are the factors of why is it happening and what it means? And then what is finally the benefit of you transforming your ordinary, normal service business into a product or at least a part of it? So this is my main point. OK, so um, let's start with part one. Um, maybe a couple years ago, I noticed that we mentioned, when we talk about the software, we, at least in English, we oftentimes say, like, it's a software product. And I was wondering, like, why is that? Why is a software product? And actually, it's like not made up, but I started Googling it. So why is it a software product? It, does, it has nothing to do with product, just a software. And then I realized that, uh, after a little bit of Googling, that there is actually, so what is the product? Mostly, when we speak about the products, we refer to physical products, like a pair of headphones, like your groceries, like a car. So this would be the product. And then it has some key criteria of what product actually means. And to these key criteria, we will be referring a lot during this speech, so that's why let's go through them real quick. 
Uh, the first is like, um, these are the features of the product. It can be touched, sensed, and in English there is a word tangible. Do you guys have the same word in, in German that you can like do like this, sense something, like, like uh, analog to tangible? Anyone? How is it called? Do you know? Zina? Fuba, okay. So you can actually sense it. So the products can be sensed. Then what you see is what you get. So this is like the real, it means they are relatable. Imagine that some of your friends buy a new iPhone and you're like, okay, like, head it to me. Like, and you go through, click it, uh, feel it, touch it, and then you're like, okay. And this, lastly, creates an experience for you. So you maybe want this product, you want to buy it, and that means because you previously experienced it and tried it, this creates an expectance of the purchase. So actually, even before you buy, before you buy normal, normal products, you're able to test it, feel it, and start expecting it to the point where you are able to make an emotional purchase. That's why an emotional purchases mostly exist in product businesses, and it's less for the services. Because um, it's like just a short amount of time, and scientifically proven, it is scientifically proven that um, kind of expectance of buying the physical products releases the maximum amount of dopamine in human's brain. So this is why e-commerce models are kind of so popular. It's just that because if you do a nice product, do a nice marketing for it, it's more likely to expand than any service business. And we'll be referring to this a lot. All right. And then last but not least is products, uh, like physical products, has the smallest, the shortest deal cycle. So, I mean, I'm not talking, I'm obviously not talking about some very custom, so like buying a Bugatti is like not a short deal cycle, but with some electronics or some physical, like uh, s small physical products, is generally way shorter until customer makes a decision to buy a product than in any like service business. So, for example, if you're running an agency, then you probably have like a week or two weeks of negotiation. Whilst if you are selling like a blanket, you can expect the customer, if you advertise it well, to like purchase at the same moment he visits your landing page. It's something that service models can only dream of. So then there is a productization chart. I'm not sure if it even exists because I kind of invented it a couple of days ago, but it is easy to showcase it this way. So let's imagine there is a chart. And on the very right, we position the physical product, which is, I'm sorry for this, but which is the maximum product of all the products. It's a physical product, like an icon. Let's position it on the right. So there is nothing that can compete with physical products in terms of productization. Oh man, that was hard. All right, so then there's a little bit mass in the, um, in the slides. The service businesses were not meant to be appearing there, but whatever. So. Now it's getting interesting. Now we're getting to the practical content. It was like a little bit of an introduction. So let's position a software right next to physical products. Because if we take all these essential features that we we're just talking about, this tangibility, repeatability, like repeatable experience, and expectance, software is basically an attempt to emulate the physical product experience. Was it a bit too much, or you guys got it? You guys get it, you're smart, okay. All right, so um, let's see how it works. When you buy a software, what do you have? So you have free trials. You have trials, you're able to test it, uh, you're able to test it yourself, you get it. So you get it before the purchase, like how exactly it's going to be after the purchase, and then you buy with your credit card. Then you can refer it to your friends or a company you know, and make sure that their experience will be the same as yours. So it's replicable and scalable, and that's why the software business model thrive in, and, it the close, and it's the closest that you can go to, towards like productize completely, kind of. And then, I mean, it's a little bit messy on the slides, but as it's already there, so I would position service business, any service business again. So whether it's an agency, you're an accountant, you're like a car mechanic, whoever, you're on the left side. And it doesn't mean that service business model is somehow worse than product ones. Both has downsides and, um, and pros, obviously. So there are people who are doing great with agencies and there are people who are failing with products. That's not the point. It's just the point of um, being scalable, tangible, and 
It's about the easiness of the marketing. That's what I was to say. All right, so what's in the middle? The new category emerged for those who wants to modernize their service business, kind of. But before that, I want to tell, talk a little bit more about on the software. So on this slide, my main point was not that if you want to take a step from a service business that you should necessarily create a software. Because actually, from my personal experience, on one of the slides, I, I've said that I uh, made like 200 projects and probably 17 or maybe even 20 were softwares. So I have to say something. Pro uh, software development comes with a cost. So if any of you would want to create a software, you, has to, you have to understand that, first of all, it comes with the price. It has like three, three big downsides. So first is the price. It's never less than 100,000 euros. Like whoever tells you what, until you get your software to the point where someone actually needs that and someone starts paying for this, this will cost you 100,000 euros more or less. Like, no way, because sellers are expensive, you will be experimenting if it's your first time. I mean, you will make plenty of mistakes, it comes with a cost. Then, if you would incorporate a software part, like I hear this a lot, so I run an agency, I will start investing into the software, and then one day I will become a millionaire with the software. I mean, smooth rides, but it's not like this most of the times. So there are definitely people in the room that I know with um, somehow software journey and an agency experience, but it only works for lowest, like for a very low percentage of people. And if you successfully made the software out of the agency, you can consider yourself lucky because out of, on each five successful examples, there is 95 of like failures and money that are spent. So building software was not my point. You can only you should only do this when you're like feel like you have to do this. But then, my point is about this new category that emerged. All right, so we took a step back, and now we're back again. It is called, this new category is called productized services. So basically, it is an attempt for service businesses to come a little bit closer to the software or to the physical product without cha actually changing too much. So the formula is really simple. The idea is not you, I mean, when we finish the slide, you will recognize it. I'm like, uh-huh, so I saw it already a couple times, but I just didn't know that it co it's called like this. Productized services. Um, as my speech today is only for, I have 18 minutes left. All right, I will speed it up a little bit. So memorize it, Google it afterwards. Next slide. Um, I mean, it's just an entry point. So from each of the master class, you, you don't have to get 100% of the content. So the best outcome would be if you go home, Google productized service, maybe do an action, and then the next year we meet each other and you're a successful entrepreneur with productized service. So that's the point, just one word. And my whole point is to like get this one word stick into your brain, kind of. Really quick, examples of productized services. The first would be Osomic. Uh, what the guys, so the problem that the guys solve is that they realized that there are so many companies out there that are essentially not digital, well digitalized businesses. So everyone needs, uh, wants to have a high-end designer without having, um, being a classical company, kind of. So high-end designers would only work with, uh, within the same kind of level of colleagues. So to hire a high-end designer into your team, you would rather have a couple of others, and then maybe developers, and then the creative unit in general. So the guys recognize this. Uh, that is like quite challenging, because um, companies want to uh, design to be in, on a top tier level, but then they struggle with hiring. And then what they offered is basically that they will do all the design tasks for you, like the designer, like professional designer, would work for you personally for a flat fee, like very simple pricing plans. And it's like a recurring work. So you pay every month, and then you just simply write them down to Slack what needs to be done. They make it down, and like, and it's like a designer is working for you without all the hustle. Next one would be Testimonial Hero. So what these guys do is they kind of serve the, I think you call it the Mittelstand, or something like this. So it's like middle, middle-sized businesses. They realize the problem of the middle-sized business is that they have a recurring stream, like evergreen stream of new customers, and those, those companies don't ever have a process for collecting testimonials. So uh, it just, I mean, they work with them, and the testimonials are gone, so they have to ask them again over the year. So these guys solve exactly this problem. They are recurrent, they have pricing plans, they would work for you collecting testimonials for you. So they would reach out to your customers, regardless of where they are. 
and then they will schedule either a Zoom meetings with them or a physical shooting, and then they, on a monthly basis, provide you with high-quality testimonials of your customers. So they work with your customer base. And for, they are mainly in the US, so for the American companies, it's like pretty valuable. And I was speaking about them last year, and since last year, they grew a lot. Like I read an article about them, so you can check it out yourself. All right. Next would be the Fuel Finance. It's the company we might cooperate with. I just found out about them. So the problem they solve is that they identify that um, startups at a growth stage, at some point, are not so mature companies from organizational perspective. So they might have a lot of revenue, but company is not like maturing enough. It's not keeping up with the speed. So they need a reporting in a certain format for them or for the VCs, private equity firms, whatever. So for, for external auditors and then they would jump into your numbers and provide this data for you on a monthly recurring basis for the flat price. All these three businesses, and I will show you more, essentially on a backend. So Osomek is a design firm. Testimonial Hero is a video production firm. And this Fuel Finance is an accounting and finance firm. So what they do with this fancy website is just a front end on top of the existing well-established old business, so with, this, with their processes. So it's all about basically building a front end with several adjustments that we'll discuss later. All right, so then Virtuans, don't know much about them, but uh, they do photography. Essentially, they do high-end photography for something like for an emo scout or so, for companies and individuals. So you will just pay flat rates, and then they will come to your property, film it in the right format, and then you have it all ready. And finally, like this Piffy, I guess this is how it sounds. It's a um, car detailing on demand. So uh, for a flat ride, very understandable. Within the short term, like the mobile auto wash will come to you and detail your car. It's like not so new, but also pretty fancy website. OK, so if we compare productized service with normal service, let's distill it a little bit. What are the differences? Productized services are normally highly scalable. This would be the first one. So I can tell you from one page experience. So one page is a software, but I could take a step forward. Onboarding a thousand of new customers tomorrow will barely change anything for the business. So I'm not bragging as obviously like this. So it could create some intense moments with support, but we're ready for this. So a thousand, again, a thousand of new customers next day would change anything for me personally or for the company. So we'll just get more revenue, more benefits, and almost no pros, except there is some fires that needs to be done. Um, for the productized services, it might not work so great, but we're speaking like, let's say, not a thousand, but maybe 50, 20, something like this. Who can tell that, the, for example, you do a service business, and if you onboard, let's pick 20, 20 new customers tomorrow, then it will not produce any complexity for you, like literally zero. You're, you're the software guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, from the service businesses, like you're an agency, and then the software guy is like, yeah, always like that. OK, so this is, by the way, one of the successful examples. So from what I know, you run an agency, right? You have an agency background? Yeah, yeah. and then they invested in a software, and they got a great investor, and they do a software in a real estate space right now, I believe, pretty successfully. All right, so then the second one would be the pricing. It's so we have over a thousand agencies in one page. I barely know 10 who has a pricing plans that they put in the front page. So almost every time I speak to the agency owners, like, I want this, what's going to be the price? It's like, ah, uh, we need to talk. So we need to talk, uh, we need to clarify, we need to negotiate. And this is the conversion killer. Like, productized services lacks that. They do have a pricing plan. Most of the times, it's like several packages. I mean, we're not going into too many details. They are on the front page. So sometimes there is a contact us button, but it's mostly for the largest one. In most of the times, it's like contact us, but for this particular package. So the only thing you have to do afterwards is basically discuss very details and then launch the next day or within a couple of days. So this is another, another uh, distinction. And I have to say that in my software journey, the pricing, and for every entrepreneur I know in the software space, was always been the toughest question. 
So defining the right pricing for your business, for your services, not only for the, so uh, for the software, is the hardest thing that most neglect that should be reworked every quarter. So um, like the smartest minds in this whole industry always tell you have to work on your pricing until your customers start telling you that they are not satisfied, but not to the point where they are churned. So you have to experiment with it. All right, and the last one would be the consistent experience. So this is where it gets really important. So this productized service distinct in that they actually come up with the package which is able to provide the, almost the, simil the similar experience one customer to another, so this, is, this experience is relatable. So for example, who had this problem in your agency or in your service business that you run a business, you're good. You bought yourself a Rolex, maybe Patek. I mean, business is going good, you go for fancy vacations, and then your employee, the most important one, just leaves, and you realize that half of your business was kind of related on this employee, and now you're the one who are facing fires. Anyone? Okay, a couple. Maybe you're like not at this stage, but it always happens that when you have an experienced employees and just um, business is hardly related and you're on the employees, you cannot grant an, a consistent experience. All right, I have to speed it up. Do you understand this slide? Yes. Yeah, you know. Okay. All right, so then there are like smaller details about productized services. So um, uh, the reason of this slide existing is like um, just be attentive next time where you visit some websites, whether you see those. And if you see those and it's not a software, it's apparently a productized business. So it's a very well-defined scope of service, which is on the forefront. Like, we do this, within these deadlines, we do this exactly this thing, we're not doing any more than that. And this is what we deliver. It's like the, the first one, then it has the packages, and then it has the significant, significant amount of social proofs and case studies. So it's not three, it's not five, it, in most of the cases, it's 20 or more. So um, probably the best example I can um, tell you about the German market, at least from the uh, people that, pre that are presented here, is like the Loft film. So on the Loft film page, you, you can see like many examples, like a lot of very similar products of a very similar quality. So people that buy from Loft film, I mean, I hope there is no competitors or so, I'm not crossing any lines, but they kind of can expect something relatable to this. All right. So we many reasons why businesses productize. Really quick, grow faster. Obviously, one package, narrow audience, you can scale. Like, same experience, not too much customized. You grow faster than if you're like jack of all trades. So most of the agency or service businesses that I see existing in dark space, their front page would be like, okay, so we are the performance marketing agency. We offer performance marketing, Google, YouTube, videos, SEO, content, copywriting, and we can even speak and like coach you something. So it's like many services, very broad. It's hard to pick something. It's, how to scale. it's hard to scale with so many value propositions because each of those could become a productized service. Then, second one, to ensure a predictable revenue. So that's why um, I suggest not to productize anything that is seasonal like seasonal business, like for example, events in Dubai or something, it's like, uh, it's fucked up, you don't have to productize this. But then, to build a productized service, you have to look for the predictable revenue, and predictable revenue means uh, recurring demand, as we call. So, you have to look for the demand that exists almost ev like every month for your customer. If you find it, and you're able to serve it well, then you can have a predictable revenue. What's good about this is that many agency or service businesses has like upsides and downsides. Sometimes you're running low on revenue, and when you only have one service or you have a couple services, but each of those are productized, you can simply push on a sales a little bit. So they, um, this is a short deal cycle. They kind of compensate this revenue really quickly. So um, within like a couple of days, not within like weeks, because if you see that you're running uh, low on revenue in a normal business, and then you initiate the process, then you can only expect any kind of outcome in a couple of weeks or more. All right, and then to make the business sellable. This is one of the most important things. It's not directly related to my presentation. I want to you to memorize kind of. Not too many people think of it. We're all young as I see here, and we are working 
investing our time and money and our emotions into something that we create right now. But we are not forever. At some day, we'll, be, we'll stop working or we'll fall out of love with something what we do. And at this moment, it would be very good if some private equity firm or our competitor would walk at our doors and offer to buy the company. Okay? So there could be two people sitting in a room where doing the same thing where like one service is like to say productized and other one is not. And then they could be earning the same amount of money, like present themselves similarly, have the similar results, but one is having a cash cow business and another is having a cash cow business and then he can sell it, he or she can sell it. So this is very important. We're building our own equity, we're building our own capitalization and it's good to think of your service business as of something that you would be able to sell in like five years or ten years and there will be people or companies that are interested in this and productized services that are detached from the founder that has a scalable system are obviously better in terms of like sellability than just a normal agency that is hardly dependent on you as an owner, for example. Because with so many people that are talking about the personal branding, so I have to do personal branding to like promote my agency and that's how my customer, I will get my customers. Personal branding is good, but if it's too closely connected and you don't have a productized thing, then you will barely sell it to anyone because none of the equity firms or your competitors will be interested in that. Okay, bonus points. Really quick. Um, not everyone is doing business just for the money. We always look for um, work-life balance, want to have a good life and just run in something that is more automated, more towards the factory, feels better as a founder. So you just feel better. You, you feel less stress because you know what you're selling is more predictable and so on. Yeah. And there is some example about one page. All right. Then I think we're more or less on time. Okay, how to productize. Uh, your traditional non-software business. It's like really quick, four slides, and that's it. First, identify the opportunity to standardize. Um, you can make a photo. There is three books I recommend at each slide. And then there is like two suggestions. First of all, e every each of you do many services. Identify the one you do most frequently and people are satisfied with it the most. So you're like really exp an expert with this. Without, and like for example, last evening I had a very good conversations with the guys. They're not there. They are doing like YouTube and performance, and they were like talking about the scaling. And then they're like, okay. And by the way, there was a videos that we do. And I, uh, the guy just showed me the video, and I was like, man, it's like world level quality. This this video in particular, like, how do you sell it? And they're like, ah, oh, we're not selling it. So we actually offer it in addition to our campaign service, and it's integrated into the campaign, and it's like under the general contract. And I was like, okay, this could be your productized service, because they claim that it's very cheap for them to produce this video, and it's like, um, people love it, kind of. All right, and then define pricing and packages, like just for an experiment. Um, add 20%, 30%, 50% on top of how much it costs to you, just this service, define any kind of guesswork pricing, so it could be looking like this. For example, if you're an agency, because I'm more towards the agency side, um, like this is the package, like we do copywriting, whatever, copywriting. So this is gonna be like 10,000 words, uh, four claims, like let's say per month. Uh, four claims, this is like what we guarantee, this is what we're not guarantee. This is the timeline how we, when we will deliver it, this is how the process works in detail. So even like we communicate with, with you like on WhatsApp or via email, this is how emails look like, this is what you get. This is like, t and this is, 20 testimonials of our customers who previously ordered the service. This is more or less the example of productiza productization. Then, draft the very first and basic process. So clear deliverables, That's, that was I was mentioning a little bit, is that what is being delivered. Uh, on most of the agency or like service business websites, especially like if it's like a car mechanic or so, you never see what is being delivered. So it's like, digitalization and automatization of your processes which you will do which we do like since 10 years ago whatever you have to have clear deliverables so what exactly is being produced in points in your pricing plans okay and then think of the outsourcing this is very important whatever is not your core business you don't have to do it you don't have to do it yourself you don't have to do it with the team so for example if i don't know like you are the videographing agency 
You don't have to build your websites on your own. You don't have to, like, um, it's better not to communicate with customers on your own, like with your core team. It's not better to invest in anything which is except of video production, which you do with your core team members. And all the rest can now be outsourced to some other cheaper countries, chat GPT, mid-journey, Notion, like whatever. You can automate it with tools and with people that are cheaper. Because too many people are investing in many, many things across their business that are not exactly their core business, kind of. OK, and this is the, like two books for this. All right, so, and finally, ship. Uh, build a standard, very simple website, even if you have one. I mean, let's say you're an agency XYZ, and tomorrow you want to launch something productized. You are not an agency XYZ anymore. You are like productized service.de or whatever. So it's just an experiment, put it on another domain, create a website really quick. It's just this page, and that's basically it. And first, sell to people you know first. Because um, you have to have a case studies, the core of the productized services is the case studies, so if you will be able to create the first three, four, five testimonials with the people you know or with your audience, it will be already cool. All right, and last but not least, a little bit of a pitch. Uh, we have one page. It has 71 templates, and most of those are suitable for productized services, so you don't have to guess how to structure your pages, actually, or how to experiment. It's already there. We have templates. You can just Click, select the right template, and then write your own text on top of it, depending on your niche. And then it's proven by top-tier businesses in DAH. So we have a lot of successful businesses that successfully utilize one page. And it's going really great for some. For some, it's not so great, but it's because they kind of concentrate on the wrong things. So I have to say from my experience, everyone who does exactly what I suggest today is doing well. They have a lot of traffic, they have a lot of leads, we're not, we're not disclosing them, but it, there, there is something that distincts successful agency or like service business owners from those who try, and most of those things we just discussed. All right, so this was it, and if you would like, as I'm the last one, um, we can have a little bit of an FIQ. So if everyone, anyone has a question for me, I can answer it. I guess so. All right. So then thanks for listening and have a nice evening at the after party.